Hi, I'm James Cirillo, and now I'm going to talk about how this guitar is set up and how to get a good projecting rhythm sound. We already talked about uh, the guitar being the rhythm guitar functioning as that tenor voice against the bass player's bass line and in establishing, we're, we're always trying to establish a good pulse grounded in one and three because this music was originally rooted in, it, in dancing for dancers. So, in order to get a good projection, you notice there's no, not even a pickup on this thing. And first, for an acoustic guitar, You've got to have, for an acoustic rhythm guitar, you've got to have an arch top acoustic, not a flat top folk guitar. The arch top gives you more of a curve, so it gives you more uh, tension on the string, which then gives you more projection. When you hit a note, it really thucks out at you. So, you've got to have an arch top acoustic guitar. You've got to have bronze wound strings, not the same kind of strings that you'd have on an electric. It's totally different. Uh, they give you a better resonance, uh, just a better quality of tone. I think there they may not be quite as much tension in these as maybe in steel strings, but the added height certainly takes care of <laughs> whatever added tension problems you may have. <laughs> the point is, heavy heavy gauge bronze bronze strings. And you want to have them set with a high action. That means you got to have this bridge up. You got to have this thing set up. This thing is set up a lot higher off the fingerboard, the strings, than on my electric. You can't really solo on a, on a properly set up acoustic rhythm guitar because the strings are just up too high. This one, compared to Freddie Green's, is set up low. But even this one, at the 12th fret, my strings are a quarter of an inch above the fingerboard. So uh, you get a lot of thuck. That's the whole idea. So we got heavy gauge, bronze strengths, arch top, acoustic guitar, high action, at least a, a quarter of an inch uh, at the 12th fret. And the other thing is you want as thick and as heavy a pick as you possibly can get. A lighter one just won't do it. I do use a lighter gauge pick, plain electric, but that's a different beast. The body of the tone on the acoustic is coming from right here. With the electric guitar, it's coming from there. So I use the strap. Let me get this thing on. And a lot of the tone, also on a guitar like this, just like on a bass, or a cello, or a violin, or anything else, comes out the back. So, the main thing with this is, you notice, I'm not playing it like so, with this thing flat up against my body. Because then my body's like, I'm just like playing up against a pillow. It's going to suck up part of the sound. And you'll see Freddie sometimes at various places. Sometimes he'd play the guitar where it was like almost parallel to his lap. And partly that's, he was finding like the sweet spot where he felt the guitar rang the best in that room. But at the very least, he'd have it at least angled a bit off that leg and up here, right at the chest. Your arms resting on the top of the guitar. So this hand is not holding it up at all. This arm is just resting there. It's, I'm totally relaxed down at the shoulder. As soon as you start to do this in any way, you've lost the battle. Shoulder's got to be down. You've always got to be relaxed. And then I have this thing, like I said, at this angle, this slightly diagonal angle. That way the, the back of the guitar is free. It's open. So if I'm playing, you just hit a couple of chords, you get an idea of the punch. Now, a lot of times maybe the band won't always hear you totally in the clear, but they're going to feel that punch. They're going to be aware of the thuck of that guitar hitting that beat, believe you me. So, if I put this thing up against my body, 
First of all, it also makes it harder for me to really hone in on those middle two strings as we talked about before. You gotta go at it like this a little bit. That's very awkward. So that's another reason that makes it a little harder. But even if I do this, it doesn't sound anywhere near as loud to me, not just the fact I've got the thing pointing up towards my head. I can feel it, feel my body sucking up some of that sound. So, uh, other than that, we talked about when the bass player's in four, you should play more of an even four. So say something like a uh, I got rhythm in B flat. And I'm going to play this entire thing, one chorus of I got rhythm, just on the fourth string. Uh, no reason to do anything else especially at a brighter tempo, one string is all you need, and it's the fourth string. So. It's not a country western band, so you don't want to make too heavy a two and four. Sometimes on, on a slower tempo on a ballad, the bass player is really hitting half notes on one and three. I'm playing one and three also, but just the fact that I'm the guy hitting two and four gives it almost like a natural accent. I'm the only guy really doing that, me and the drummer. So on a slower tempo, and I, at a slower tempo, I can add more notes. So I can play that third string also once in a while. Maybe just one note. Uh, maybe even the sixth string also. Make it a three-note rhythm chord. So say something. I'll just play I Got Rhythm, but at a slow ballad tempo. Seems sort of goofy, but there you go. notice at the slower tempo I can throw in more notes also my beats one and three I'm holding on to I'm playing them longer and right now it's just me but if the bass player was maybe making his notes a little shorter that's that's about how long I would make my note and then my two and four would be just like with the drummers hi-hat so everything that the rhythm guitar player does is rooted in there with the bass player and rooted in there with the drummer. We're always playing within the rhythm of the drums. We're always listening to the bass. Uh, sometimes if he plays and throws another note, then I'll know well, maybe that added bass note won't work. I gotta go back to my inside string, stay out of the way. Uh, mainly that's it. So the the, the faster the tempo, the less you play. Slower the tempo, you can play a couple of more notes. And think of the length of your chord and your stroke, just like the drummer's hi-hat, just like the bass player's note, half notes on one and three. <laughs> 